here we are, 365 days later for my 27th birthday recap video. I want to apologize right now, it's going to be a bit windy this video, I'll try my best to fix it, clean it up in post production, but this is the actual, I'm filming this on the actual day of my birthday which is the day you're watching November 8th. And I wanna say thank you to everyone already for the birthday wishes on Facebook, um, Instagram, and YouTube where I have most of the majority of comments being like happy birthday wishes. So I wanna say thank you. I love each and every single one of y'all, man. Even if I never met, oh, I almost failed. See what I'm talking about, it's too windy. Even if I never met any of y'all in person yet, I wanna say I love you and I thank you for tuning in and watching these videos. Getting into this thing career-wise, this year was, it was pretty on and off. It was off in the last six months because I did not know what my next step was. I didn't have a goal. I didn't have a plan. I never wrote down a business model. I didn't know how to do a business model. I was uninspired. I wasn't motivated. And the last like two months alone, I was, I was barely uploading. And obviously when YouTube is like your main source of income, and you're barely uploading, and when you do upload, you're not averaging out views that you normally once did, it becomes very disappointing and unmotivating to do. Like, you can spend hours on end recording and filming, and then you upload, and then you get like 4,000, maybe 8,000 views a video. And let's say you upload three times a week, that's what, let's say on average, 8, 16, 24, 24,000 videos a week, 24,000 views a week, barely be averaging out like 100 and some thousand views a month. And if your CPM, which is your cost per minute, I think that's what the M stands for, but it's like cost per thousand view. If like, let's you know, say so your CPM is like $6 per thousand view, imagine where your check would be, right? So, you know, me not uploading, my check diminished, like literally in half. But that was okay because I was still making ends meet. I was still getting a flow. I was actually, thank you so much to the homie Mark from Honda Street Garage. Man, man, Mark is like my angel dog. Mark had talked sense into me like, yo, you're at a place, you you have a platform, you have an audience. Use your audience for so you can make money. And I was like, bro, what are you talking, how do you do that? Like what? So he, he coached me to howing, how, how I'm able to make money without really slaving 12 hours a day on a YouTube video to make like 20 bucks when I can use my actual audience to generate me more revenue from working with the people that I already worked with. And doing that, I was able to create more of a, more streams of income to where I didn't have to rely so much on YouTube to make my income. And then that allowed me to get my mental in check because bro, it's nothing hurts more when you're so passionate about something, you put your, your effort, your time, like you put passion to something and it just, it's not working out. It's not working out in your favor because you don't have the appropriate resources to do it. I know how to make banger videos. I can, my, my production on my videos has always been great. Like some, well I ain't gonna say always been great, but it's been, it's been to where like people would write me DMs. Like, and say, bro, I love the way you edit your videos. I love the effort you put in your videos. I love it, I see it. And I wish you, I wish you get more views. I wish this and that and the third. And it's like, I do too but I never knew how to create a business model. So I wanna give a thank you to Will, the owner of Hybrid Racing, for getting on a phone call with me and talking to me for like two and a half hours and just giving me game on like, yo Zosh, you have it man, like you got the audience, you know what to do, you just need a better marketing strategy, you need a better, you need a business profile. How, like if you were to ask a bank for a loan, how would you do it? How would you give the people their money back? And I, I wasn't thinking like that. And that's because I don't have anyone in my life in particular that do what I do in a sense where like you're your own boss and you have to, you have to make a way. I don't have that. I'm the only person I know that does what I does. You know what I mean? To me, it's one of those things where like now that I have the tools and the the knowledge to like create a business model, create a business plan, figuring out how to talk to these banks and get loans to fund my actual channel to the point where I like it's sustainable. I don't have to work every day. You get what I'm saying? I wanna enjoy life. I wanna be able to go on vacation. If I go on vacation and film it and it's not getting views, then like why am I doing it? You know what I mean? I don't wanna think like that. I wanna be able to just go on vacation and have fun and not worry about, well, if I don't upload this, then I won't get paid. and. That shit sucks, bro. That shit sucks. No one should live like that. No one. We're in the golden age right now of social media and you know finding ways to pledge allegiance to the bag. And 
my mistake is like doing dumb things and not having the resources and the knowledge and the guidance to figure out how I can plan my next step better. So the last like couple of months, I've just been really down and just like depressed about it, honestly, because I like I wasn't uploading, and then when I do upload, I can't read my comments because if I read my comments, I'm gonna get like upset because I'm gonna get shit talked about me and like I can't I don't deal well with that like I don't deal well with people talking down on me I, I just I don't deal I, I, I can't do it so like I can't really be reading my comments on like engaging with people that's not like a DM no one would ever really talk shit to you through a DM they'll do it on comments and, and if you expose that you don't like comments then people like know how to get a comment out of you by saying oh well Zosh don't like when people talk shit about him so I'm gonna go in this video and talk shit and blah 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 but it's this thing like we're all human beings you know what I mean no one no human wants to be talk shit about but that's just the that's just the game we're in like when you do YouTube of course people are not gonna like what you do like the content you post I, I get that I understand that but when I was writing in my journal and writing on my vision board, I always wrote and envisioned that I would have a healthy audience. I would have an audience where like they support me. They have my back. If somebody talks shit, then they would defend me. Like, bro, why are you here? Like, this ain't the place for that. You get what I'm saying? Like, I look at other YouTubers and, you know, it's not good to compare yourself to other YouTubers and, you know, do all that stuff. But like, I look at how their fan base is and that's fucking beautiful, bro. I don't want to bring this up, but you guys already know about the whole Tommy F your thing, right? And then he made a video explaining what happened and the people was like, shh, dog, dogging him in the comments, just dogging. Then like a month later, he uploaded another video and all his comments were, 99.9% .9 positive and I was like yo imagine if I did some shit like that to where some of my people somebody think I'm scamming them and there's a whole thing and now I'm in like the negative eye then I come back to YouTube a month later with a new video and everyone's like giving me love and praise and all that bro imagine son that privilege right there is amazing bro I can only wish to have that but it's just you know what I mean it's just one of those things where like you know, I don't know where I was going with that one. Honestly, it was just more or less like I'm jealous and I'm envious. But I know that that doesn't that doesn't really do nothing for me. But I'm always keeping it positive. Like I used to be a hater. I ain't gonna hold you. I used to be a huge hater. I was like, man, how are people like this shit garbage. Like, really, people like this type of like what, bro? Like this man don't even work on his shit. Like, what do you, bro? I used to be a hater, and that never got me anywhere. Being a hater gets you nowhere, bro. It's so tr like I don't know, dog. Being a hater is not cool at all, but yeah, man, it was just one of those things where like I was always just like I was just down, and I was like, bro, who's my audience? I don't know who watches me. I don't have an audience. I don't know the people that genuinely rock with me. I don't know. I don't have a sense of community, and I've been really trying to figure out what my branding is for that. You know what I mean? But all in all, I feel like I, I'm in a place right now where I'm still not sure how I'm gonna go about the whole YouTube thing without getting like a big ass loan <laughs> to like do builds and things of that nature. But I'm trying my best, dog. I'm, I'm trying to figure out more ways to generate more streams of revenue so I can give the content that I know I'm capable of giving. I just have to figure out how to just get my foot in the door, get some funding going so I can, you know, create the content. Because like the homie Mark said, bro, you really can't create content that's entertaining and things of that nature. If you're limited on budget, being an automotive YouTuber, your whole thing is budget, having money. You have to have money to do this car shit. It's surprising, it's it's shocking how I've managed to have 277,000 YouTube subscribers with no money, essentially. Like, that's, in, imagine me with money and creating the content, bro. I would easily, I'm telling you, bro, I'm, I'm going to be the guy that makes the way for all people of color to really be like, yo, if Zosh can do that shit, I can do it too. All I need is to pick up a camera and just be my 100% authentic self, bruh. That's all you have to do. You know what I mean? But make sure you have money bags because if you ain't got money bags, it's gonna be kind of hard to get that following. You man, man, you know what I mean? That's why I was toying with the idea of selling the Integra and things like that. It's just to fund myself because I, I know in order to grow you have to make sacrifices bro and i was thinking about really sacrificing my integra to fund something new for the channel and whether it goes or not i have to take those risks but i don't want to i i can't get rid of the integra man i can't get rid of the civic 
So I'm just working hard behind the scenes, get, pumping out quality merch with Zashim FG, investing more money into that brand. Like when I did my ship knobs, dude, I sold out on my ship knobs. Granted, I only made 24 ship knobs, but I sold out in two hours. And that was the first time I've ever sold out anything with the price point of $100. Because it, it was that special to me that I was like, this is something that like I might not be able to experience again. And it would be nice to have it would be nice to have my name on something that people can cherish and have and really you know what I mean? So I wanted to I just wanted to make it special and I did my own packaging. I didn't source out them packaging. I did my own packaging to make it so I wrote on it. I wanted it to be special. I signed in every autograph, every single one of them. I just wanted something special for the people that watch me and, and value me as a person and what I'm trying to do to have something special. And I'm so grateful to the 24 people that did buy something and to the people that didn't even, that couldn't buy it because it was sold out, that wanted to. I'm so, like I'm indebted and I'm, and I, I'm, and you guys are so valuable to me, man. And I'm, I'm glad that you guys poured into me the way you guys did, man. I really appreciate it and I'm very thankful. Moving on to my personal life side of things. I got a girlfriend. <laughs> so June 6th of uh, 2021, I met my Hansi bear. I met this beautiful girl named Hansi. And dude, she we both came into each other's life by like, it was crazy. I wasn't even supposed to go to the car show that day. Me and Fred went to this car show at Palm Beach International. And I wasn't even supposed to go, but we, we, we both weren't supposed to go. Uh, me and Fred, but we saw like, bro, we're bored. We got nothing to do. If you go, I go type B. So we end up going. Some family stopped me. I started talking to the family, and then she walked by. We made eye contact, but like I had my glasses on because I'm one of those guys. Like I will not talk to you, bro. I I am the person that like I will not sp I will not come up to you and speak to you. I fear rejection. I I don't know what it is. Something probably happened in my childhood where like I don't know. It could be some family trauma there. Whether I felt neglected by my dad or something, I don't know. I just fear rejection. So like, if you're a pretty girl and I want to talk to you and I think you're cute and everything, I will not, I won't say shit to you. <laughs> I won't do it, dog. It's just not me. But um, long story short, she ended up uh, tagging me on an Instagram post of my, of my like she's not even into cars, but she ended up going with her friend and her friend's uh, boyfriend. Shout out to Malik. That's my guy. He he knew who I was. And he's like, oh, that's Zasha's car. Cause she's like, oh, he has such a cute car or whatever. So she ended up tagging my car, was posting my car and tagging my at name. And then I, I'm like, oh, that's the girl from, I get back home from the car show. I'm like, yo, I, and I hit the group show. I'm like, yo, that's the girl. That's the girl from uh, the car show earlier. So anyway, I end up sliding in her DM with something funny. Like ah, I said something stupid, but lo and behold, we've been together for like a year and some months now. And we live together got a place together it, it bro it's just wild how like how fast that happened but it happened to the point where like i wasn't scared and i manifested her like i, I literally wrote in my journal the type of girl i want how i want to be taken care of mentally and like how i want to feel cared for and she knocked it out the box with everything like this girl has been by my side through all of this stuff that i've been through this year when it was health as it still is going like health related issues that i'm having and just like everything she's been like a rock by my side and i love bro i've never felt this way about a girl that like really values me and loves me unconditionally like she taught me so much about pride i used to be a very prideful person like let's say i'm out with my girl and we get in, like a little argument i will be so passive aggressive like i'll be like like i'll be quiet i'll just shut down i'll be quiet in the sense where like i'm not talking and like she's that type of person that like pride aside she will still she will, she will still do something for you me on the other hand like if i say i'm gonna do something for you and like you piss me off or something goes on and i don't do it that's because i like i feel pissed off by you but her on the other hand she will still do it like she's that type of person and like she taught me that like it's okay to like pride pride is the devil like shout out to j cole pride ruins a lot of things and i'm so glad that she taught me that Pride could ruin something really great for me. I, I'm so easy to self-sabotage because I don't I don't feel like I'm deserving of someone so great. I'm so used to like not toxic relationships, but relationships that where like I feel like I have to earn someone's like love or something. Like she makes me feel like I don't have to earn it. Like I don't have to like I'm like I'm already just deserving of her love and love that I feel like I deserve to myself. But I feel like when people try to give me love that I feel like I know I deserve, I feel like I don't deserve it. You know what I mean? It's so contradicting, but 
she makes me feel so great man so like it was i don't know man like we end up moving in together like five six months into our into dating and it was just weird because one night I was on the phone like we just met each other I'm like we want to move in together let's get a place together type shit and you know lo and behold like that was after, that was like in the first month like y'all see that meme like oh don't talk to me because in three days i'm gonna think we're already married and shit like it's, it's a meme like that but that's literally how me and her her, her relationship happened like of course like we always have a, got a lot of great times, but there's also a lot of bad times where like, there was one point in our relationship where we didn't talk. We lived together, but like, we didn't talk for like three days because of my own self. I don't know, I don't even know what I was upset about, but like, I was really like, I'm so easy to just like throw in the towel type when shit gets hard. It's weird, cause like, I'm only like that with her because I feel like she's, she's so good to me. And that's so toxic. Like, she's so good to me that I feel like I don't deserve her. I feel like she deserves better. But it's like, why can't I be better type? You get what I'm saying? It's so, bro, this girl is like, she was really sent from God. Like she journals, she manifests, like she does everything that I want to do. And I want it in a partner. Like she's just, man, Hansi, if you watch this video, thank you so much for just everything you did for me and you do for me. You, My mom loves you, Jazz loves you. My family adores, like my mom, like I always want a relationship like this like I always wanted it and like I would always push her away because I, I never felt worthy of her and it's since because like I guess I, I wasn't feeling worthy of myself because of what I was going through I feel like as a man if I don't have my finances in order then I'm not able to take care of you and she's like she's like babe we're a team where you got to stop thinking that it's all about you if if we don't work out it's you like if you don't have money or this that, and the third then I'm gonna leave you that's not why I'm with you you know what I mean? Like she, she, she's the dude. She's the best, and I have to figure out more ways to show her that I value her and I appreciate her, because she's she's honestly the best, dude. Like she's great. And I remember one time I was on the way home from my mom's house. I was like, baby, you know something? You want to know something? She's like, well, I was like, I think I'm gonna mess this up because you're too good to me. It, but the way I said it was just so funny. She's like, what? Because it was just so funny. I'm like, it's just I don't know, like. I don't, I hope, I pray that I don't mess this up with her. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not stupid to like do something like talk to other girls. I don't do that shit, bro. Like, I don't, like, nah, I'm good on that. But it's like, I don't want to mess up in a sense where like I self-sabotage. And I don't want to do that thing where like I push my own sabotages onto her. Like, I gaslight her. I don't want to be a gaslighter, bro. I don't want to gaslight nobody. And I don't want her to feel like, you know, she's not valued in things of that nature. Because she really is. I just have to be more affectionate I guess like growing up I wasn't really shown affectionate from my dad and my mom because they didn't grow up with affection like that so it's hard it's hard for them to do that you know what I mean our parents like if you're in the 20s your parents probably like especially in the black community or the Hispanic community or whatever like whatever community honestly but it's it's more in like the the urban community I should say where your parents wasn't really shown love by their parents you know what I mean like your grandparents didn't show your parents love, so it's hard for them to, to give you the love that that would make you feel deserving. So that's why our generation is the one to break that curse, that generational curse of like showing our kids the love that we really need to deserve. And you know what I mean? I, I'm so thankful for my mom for what she does. I love my mom to death. She did everything she could in her power to give me the best life, and she did that. She made things happen when she didn't have the money. And you know, I'm always, I, I, man, if I could, bro, I would give my mom everything. Man, I can't wait to give her everything. But I'm just like, I thought I was affectionate. Like when we first met, I was like, yeah, I'm a very affectionate person, blah, 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 blah. But that's what I tell myself because that's what I want to be. I want to be affectionate. And she's been teaching me and showing me ways to really dive into my love language and things of that nature. But like in my personal life, it's been rocky in our relationship. Obviously, that's every relationship. But like living together, it ha it's, it's, it's been easy actually. Like, you know I say? It's never really easy living with somebody, but me and her, we mesh. Like there's things obviously I do, like I leave the clothes outside of the clothes hamper. I forget the clothes cabinets, you know, regular degular stuff like that. You feel me? But like we, 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 we are really a great team and I'm very fortunate to have this person in my life. And you know, this, this year was really a lot about pride, putting my pride aside. So I guess I would title this video um, was like, really learning pride and not to be such a prideful person because pride is the root of like evil dog you really, you really don't want to be prideful man that that will take away so much from you that you don't even know so 
um this year man it's just been it's been a roller coaster like i've had a lot of highs and i had a lot of lows with like having no money in my name but still trying to figure out how to make things right like the whole my whole thing with these videos has been a lot about finances and not really putting my money like not having money and when i do get money i have to spend it because you know you have to make money you have to spend money to make money but i haven't been making great income in these last couple of years i've been making money but not making money you get what i'm saying and but like she's all my girl also helped me with money management i was a lot of, i was i was a full center with my money i'm thinking like oh if i spend the money on if i spend the two thousand dollars on these wheels on my credit card then maybe you know i'll get enough views or something i was being naive and just dumb saying like oh if i spend four grand on like six parts and i make a video on it then i'll i'll generate the revenue back and that 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 never happened that that never happened at all so I started being more smart with money, saving more money, uh, actually paying off. Like I put myself in a lot of credit card debt to keep up with like the YouTube thing of like being able to make content. And a lot of us face that, man. We might not talk about it, but like you have to put yourself in these these pickles, these tight spots, so you can grow. And that's what I've been doing. But like I I need to do it on a scale where it makes sense. You know what I mean? If it don't make money, it don't make sense. And what I'm doing is not making sense. So I have to switch up the program and figure out how I can get, you know, to where it can make sense. And that's what I'm learning how to do. And I'm, and I'm thankful that I have a partner that's like helping me in the sense for like manage, money management skills and just showing me how she saves her money and like giving me advice on like, babe, should I buy this? Should I not buy this? She's like, do you need it? I'm like, I don't need it, but I want it. But well, he doesn't want it. It's just gonna make you money. Like she, she's very, She's like my accountant type B. It, it's just awesome, man. It, it is really great. So I think like from 27 to 28 next year, I will have my finances in order. I will be financially um, secure. I'll have financial financial abilities to do things. I'll be able to go buy stuff without worrying about, damn, hopefully that money from this sponsor come in or hopefully, you know, blah, 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 blah. And one thing that I really need to understand is my worth to these companies. That's that's the biggest thing I struggle with is my worth. Wind is crazy, yo. All I'm trying to say is, man, um, know your worth, bro. Really, truly know your worth and know what you provide and bring to the table. And don't take less than what you feel like you deserve. If you feel like what you deserve isn't being offered to you or like you tell them what you deserve and they're not appeasing that, then that's not the person you should be working with, bro. Honestly, and that's what I'm having to figure out now. One of those things, dog. It's just one of those things. Just business things, I guess. I'm just learning because like, I don't have any guidance. I'm my own mentor. I don't have nobody like giving me advice and things that I need. I, I have no one to talk to that's like a, another, you know, YouTuber that's, you know, doing what I'm doing in a spectrum of like where, you know, you're, you know, POC. I'm my best to maneuver through this industry in a way where like if someone was coming up under me I can give them advice and be a mentor and OG to them type thing so once I figure it out I promise I'm gonna put everyone on who, who needs it who needs a mentor but yeah man this year was filled with a lot of highs a lot of lows a lot of self-discovery about my own traumas and things that I Bro, it, it, it's, it's been a lot, man, but I'm blessed to be here. I'm, I'm very grateful to be here to still be able to create YouTube videos. Maybe not as freaking as I would like, but I'm still glad I'm able to pick up the camera and make somebody's day by just making them laugh and just uploading, seeing my name come across your phone as a notification. You know, I'm still glad that I have some type of support system still there. Um, I'm just very thankful to be in the position that I'm in in life. And I don't take none of this for granted at all. And I need to just get back on the the wagon of just figuring out how i can create that community that i'm i'm hoping for and yearning for i really i really want that that tight-knit community where i have people that got my back you get what i'm saying like i want to i want to feel like i have a sense of place like i have an audience i have people that watch me things of that nature but i want to have like a community you get what i'm saying i want like i, I we're gonna get there though we're gonna get there for sure we're gonna get there <laughs> probably already there i just don't read my comments i really don't be knowing anymore and it's it's sad that i don't read my comments because i'm pretty sure there'd be some some great comments there people showing me love and support it's just i just can't deal with negativity man like i i, I don't know bro I, ah yeah yeah <laughs> It's, it's just been a year, man, and I'm, I'm grateful that I'm still here. I'm still able to do this. 
even though the world's getting crazier and crazier each year, I'm just glad that I'm able to sit at this spot every year and just talk game with you guys about what I've been up to, what I've been thinking. To close out this video, I'm in higher spirits. Uh, I feel good about where I'm heading in my life. Uh, I just gotta figure out more stuff on the YouTube business side of things. Zashim FG is doing great. I'm giving people, people are actually, people are like supporting me more than ever now. Like when I'm selling, dude, I, I'm, I'm selling more products. It's just awesome, man. I'm, I'm very appreciative of, I, I don't know what happened in these last couple of months, but I've just been feeling very like depressed and down. But like on the other hand, I've been feeling motivated. I've been feeling like I'm ready to conquer this shit. Like 2023, if I can figure out some funding and some resources and uh, getting some new builds and stuff on the channel bro we're gonna bro i'm telling you bro i'm telling you bro i have bro i wrote the best business plan ever to i just need to figure out where i can take my zashim fg llc to get like funding for it and then just go from there and then bro we're gonna be up we're gonna be up dog i am going to break down more barriers for people to understand that we are in this shit we're in this dog we're, I'm, I'm working on it i'm working on it Hey, thank you to each and every single one of you guys for watching these yearly recap videos, for watching all of my videos. I love you so much, man. I love you more than words can. Bro, you guys changed my life. And I thank you for everything, good or bad. Thank you so much. But thank you. Thank you so much for everything. I love each and every single one of y'all. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helps anyone out there with having pride and figuring out what your worth is. I feel like I said everything I wanted to get off my chest where I could feel free and let you guys in on where I've been mentally and, and things of that nature. I think I did a good job at that. I know the wind is freaking me up, but um, thank you and I love you and I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.